So we're going to start with the library's main website, which is library.rpi.edu. Um, you can also get there through the info page, which is probably what you're used to finding resources. Um, Quick Google, Google search is also a great way to find us, just RPI libraries, and we'll pop right up. Um, but what we're going to go over today is basic searching using this quick search tool right here on the main page. And also, I will be showing you how the catalog can be used to do basic searching. Um, let me close this here. Is everybody able to see the screen here? I got a weird message. Okay. Um, so we'll be going over quick search and we'll also be going over the catalog. Um, and how they're different and then how they're how they find similar things, but how they can also find different things. So that's that's a new skill for a lot of new students. Um, we're also going to talk about how to narrow your results, which is a really good skill to have going forward and how to find scholarly or peer reviewed resources. If that's what you're looking for for your class. Um, lastly, we'll go into narrowing down to books or ebooks or media through using our different databases and catalog resources. And then if there's time at the end, which I think there should be, especially if it's just the few of us in here, um, I'll show you how to find discipline specific resources. And so I can show you how to find databases specifically about science and technology and what we would call best bets to access those resources. So let's jump right in and I will uh, stop my video for now. The first thing we're gonna do here is, let's say that we have a topic that we're searching and since we have a few people in the um, attendance, if you want to put a topic that you're searching in the chat, you can do a drop down everyone and something that you're currently uh, researching. And I'm happy to use that as a test um, example. So sort of your own personalized uh, reference session here. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to be searching for something in the quick search that I know everybody probably could use. And this will be stress management. And so I do a quick search, I can click enter, I can click that um, magnifying glass over there. And you'll see that um, if you're off campus, you'll see a, a bar at the top or a line at the top somewhere up here where it's red and it'll say, um, hello guest for full access login. And so you can click and enter your RCS ID and password. And that's gonna be a single sign on, the shibboleth sign on. Um, and then once you're logged in completely, you can get access to all of the resources that RPI subscribes to. Um, you can access things as a guest off campus, but if you have an RCS login, which you do, <laughs> it's much better to log in and get full access. Um, if you're on campus, you shouldn't have to do that. You should just be um, in there already. So you'll see here I'm in Rensselaer Libraries. I'm using the quick search discovery tool, and I've done a very basic search for stress management. Um, that one of the top things that quick search can do for us is it can show us what this research starter and they're suggesting a um, alternate synonym stress reduction. And if I want to just get a very basic view on stress management or stress reduction, I can click on that research starter and you'll see that this is quick searches um, discovery tool saying these are the things that we think you would need to know if this is a topic that you're researching. And so they can give you, you can listen to this, by the way, since it's an HTML format. Um, it can give you sort of an overview. And I I'm trying to think, um, I guess if, you, if you're inclined to go to a Google search and look at Wikipedia or look at um, WebMD or something like this, whenever you're first doing research and you're not used to doing academic research right off the bat, that's sort of the, the state of mind or the frame of mind that you would be in when you would click on this um, research starter. And so I wanna go back here. Um, that's gonna be an overview. It's going to be things that you may or may not have known going in. And I would actually recommend a different resource for that um, type of overview. And I'll make a note to tell you about that later. It's called Credo Reference, but I don't wanna get off track here. But basically Credo Reference would be if you are inclined to go to Wikipedia for an overview of information, Credo Reference is a database that we subscribe to, which is a much better tool than Wikipedia for academic information. So here we are in the quick search discovery tool. I've done a search for stress management. And the first thing that I wanna do is welcome. I see uh, Brenda just joined us. Welcome Brenda. Um, I see that I want to narrow results for my stress um, management or stress reduction search. And so if I look over here in the limiters, I'll see I can limit to 
full text if I'm interested in getting something right now and I don't have time to wait for interlibrary loan. I can limit to peer reviewed only. This would be if your professor or your um, research guide is telling you that you need to use academic or scholarly peer reviewed sources only. And what that will do is it will eliminate things like this video recording. It might eliminate some ebooks that aren't from scholarly publishers. It will eliminate um, less academic um, periodicals. So you might see that sometimes we have access to things like time um, or science, things, um, nature, some of the things that aren't necessarily nature would be, but anyway, you can check peer reviewed. Uh, you can click ebook only if you're off campus and you don't have access to come on and get a print book. And so for right now, I'm going to say, I would like stress management. I definitely need full text. I want this right now. I don't want to wait, especially if I'm stressed, right? <laughs> and if I'm off campus, I really need an ebook. So keep in mind when you check something like book or ebook and you're looking up a topic, a book will contain more general information. So a book will not be the most current scholarly conversation that's happening about that topic because a book will take longer to write, edit, publish, and go through that entire process. So even if the book is published in the last year or five years, it still will be a little less timely than if you were looking for peer reviewed scholarly journal articles. Um, but books are a really good way to get an overview of a field or doing a literature review of an area or a field. And so here I have 553 results that have come from this quick search discovery tool that are about stress management um, and they're in ebook format. Now you'll also see there's a publication date limiter over on the left hand side. And I will be using the words limiter and filters synonymously throughout the demonstration. Um, and so you'll see that there's a limiter or a filter called publication date over here on the left. And as much as historical information can be useful when you're doing research, um, there's a lot, there's more times than not that you want more current information. So if I limit this to, let's say, 2015 to 2022, I can click enter. And you'll see that I've gone from over 500 results to under 200 results. Um, and so right off the bat, I'm already looking at more current information. You'll also see over here on the right hand side of the screen, and this is true with the articles as well, you'll see this little magnifying glass. And if I hover over the magnifying glass, this is one of my absolute favorite uh, little known tricks of using the quick search discovery tool. Within this pop out, you'll see um, an abstract or a summary. And it gives you a chance to get a quick overview of what that resource can contain. Maybe it'll have the table of contents. If it has that available, sometimes that'll show up in the um, subjects, table of contents, abstract. And you'll be able to see a summary. And if this isn't a resource that you really do want to look further into. Um, I also want to show you a little bit further down here in the limiters or the filters on the left hand side. You can also see the publication. And so if you're, um, if you are looking for more general information, so you've opted for a book or an ebook format, but you want this to be more scholarly book information, you can select all of the different publishers of these books. And you can see, for example, I'm just going to kind of scroll down a little bit. Um, Springer ebooks will be most likely peer reviewed. Um, encyclopedias will be much more general. And that top one stood out to me. So I can do Harvard Medical School special health reports, and that will limit me down to three out of these almost 200 resources. And so you'll see here, this is an ebook. Um, we're accessing it from Credo Reference. And it was published by Harvard Medical School Special Health Reports in 2019. And then if you actually want to access the resource, you can do get it at our PI. And what that will do is show you all of the different ways that you can access it. So a lot of times when you're doing um, academic level research, 
one of the first things I like to point out is it may take you longer to find the resource that you're looking for because there are some more steps built into the process. Um, we are very used to going to Google, doing a search for what we want, clicking the link and being brought to the resource. And so when we have that sort of instant gratification uh, search and retrieval process imprinted in our brains, it can feel bulky or slow when we're looking for scholarly information and we have to click through multiple pages to get to the information. Um, but when you see this get it at our PI page, what it's telling you is this is the information that you're looking for. You can access it from Credo Reference Full Text. Um, and then it tells you below that other ways that you can access the information. That doesn't always pop up, just so you know. If I take off the publication, so anytime I want to remove a filter, I look up here under my current search results, and I say I want to remove this by clicking this X for Harvard Medical School. Now I'm back to those 200 results. And let's say I want to look for scholarly articles. So I've already done sort of my search here for eBooks. And I want to back out a little bit and say, okay, let's take away this ebook filter on the left hand side. And back to my 500 or actually 88,000 results. And now I want to check peer reviewed only. So previously, you'll recall, I checked ebook only. Now I want to do peer reviewed only. So, one little hiccup I like to point out, it didn't happen here, but sometimes your publication date will default back to that older publication date when you switch your limiter. And so if you notice that you're seeing older um, or less current results, go back and make sure that that publication date carried through as you were changing your research. Um, I also like to point out at this point, because we've done a couple of quick searches in quick search, um, appropriately named, and we've switched formats, we've switched publishers, we've seen that we've gone from um, tens of thousands of results down to three results. At this point, it's nice to point out that there's a search history up here at the top, right underneath the keyword search, um, right underneath the search bar. And you'll see that that search history will show you we've done six searches, um, the search terms. So you'll notice that when we added a limiter or a filter, it added the Boolean operator and, and it changed it to be um, ebooks. You can also see here all of the limiters that we used are showing in the options. And if you get to the point where you're doing your research, doing quick search, and you say, you know, I really enjoyed that list that I was looking at that had that had three results, but I don't know how to get back to that list. By clicking on search history, you can glance over here at view results and you'll see that this is the one that had three results. And if I click view results, it should open it up at the right right there at the bottom of that um, search history screen. And so this is a really nice way to keep track of where you've been. And it's a little bit of a breadcrumb trail if you want to go back and find uh, search that you did earlier. Um, you can also add alerts, save searches alerts. And if you do this, it'll have you log in up here and actually um, log into our discovery tool. I believe that's single sign on also. Um, and when you save a search or an alert, you can have it email you whenever more, more current information shows up on this topic. Um, so that search history is a really nice little hidden tool up there. And I actually want to use the search history for a second to go back to the 88,000 plus results. And then you can just close the search history by clicking it again. It's got that little arrow next to it. So, uh, so here I am, stress management as a keyword. Um, I want to get a little bit more advanced with this search. And so the first thing I want to do is click on advanced search. I've got stress management and I want to add, uh, let's say college. college. And so you'll notice here uh, another thing I want to point out as we go through. When we use sites like Google, um, what Google does is it gives you a drop down of suggestions. And so a lot of times we have learned to just ignore this drop down of suggestions. Um, a lot of times when sites like Google give you a list of suggestions, what they're showing you is what other people are also searching. And so 
uh, a little side note, sometimes if I'm, you know, um, offline for a couple of days and I want to know what I missed, I will go to Google and I'll just type in what, and then I'll type in when, and I'll type in where, and what the, what the sentence is that Google suggests to you are kind of what people are currently talking about. Um, so that's kind of a fun little game if you're ever wondering what people are talking about. On Google, there was that infamous year where if you typed in what, we're going back about seven years now, uh, Google said, what color is the dress? <laughs> so that, that gave me a clue that I needed to go find out what was going on. So this is different. This, uh, as I type in college here, or if I started to type in education here, um, what you'll notice is it's suggesting keywords, but these keywords are actually sort of a controlled vocabulary of keywords that if you pick the specific keywords, you will narrow your results even further down. So this isn't just what other people are searching. I can say college or university or higher education to kind of cover all of my bases. Um, college ad admissions, here's an example. And so for me, I think I want to say I want to say graduate students, actually, because I know that we have graduate students here on the on the workshop. So I'm searching for stress management and graduate students. Um, I'm going to do search. Remember, I had about 88,000 plus. So that's dropped me dramatically uh, down to 558 resources, which is actually quite surprising. And then I also want to do a peer reviewed only search here. I want to make sure I'm viewing peer reviewed articles only. And at this point, if you were, so we're about 20 minutes into this. At this point, if you were 20 minutes into your research and you realize you've just now found a really good list of resources, and as I'm talking, I'm noticing that, that little um, hiccup that I pointed out to you earlier, we've gone back to 1983, uh, which is not a year we want to go back to. So we're going to say 2015 again, click enter. Um, there's no set number for that. A lot of people will say the last five years, the last five to 10 years, depending on the field of your study, uh, it may, there may be a, a better frame of years to search. You can always ask one of your professors, when I'm looking for current information in my field or in my discipline, what's the date range that I should limit them to? Because depending on your discipline, um, there, there may be discipline specific uh, best or good practices. So here I've got stress management and graduate students. Um, I've looked for available here at RPI, so that full text only, and I've looked at peer reviewed only from 2015 to 2022. And I'm down to 194 results. And at this point, I may run into that instance where, okay, I'm out of time. I'd like to review these results later. How do I save them? Um, if you leave your search and come back later, this search history will not be here anymore. Uh, this is only good during your active searching. So there's a button over here that says share over here on the right hand side of the screen. And it's not very intuitive. So I like to point this out. If you drew, if you click on share, you'll get a drop down. And there's a couple of different things that you can do. My favorite thing is this persistent link to the search. And if you copy paste and email yourself that persistent link to the search, that will bring you back to these 194 results. Um, if more articles have been published since the time you clicked on the link, you may see more results because what it's doing is it's showing you results that meet your filters or that fit into your filters. You can also create an email alert at this point. So sometimes uh, if, there's, um, if there's a theory or something that I'm or a philosophy that I'm kind of following and I want to know next time somebody publishes something about that, I can click email alert and it will email me the next time there's a new resource added that meets these different criteria that you have outlined. Um, you can also do email a link to download, which I haven't done before, but that may be the same as using the permalink. So just to keep in mind that share button is not the first place most people would think to create alerts or find a permalink. So that's over there on the right. And then let me go back because I didn't mean to click that. Um, and then we're going to get out of here in a minute, but just to show you. So let's see. Do, 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 do. 
okay, counseling is great, but not for me. So it's a catchy title. Um, a lot of times some of these titles have sort of a clickbait feel to them because people want, um, you know, researchers want their articles to get read. So as much as I appreciate the catchy title, it doesn't always tell you much about the article. So here on the right, here's our trusty friend, the magnifying glass. And I can see here that there's some authors, um, the journal that this came from, the date that it was published, that it's an academic journal, so it's peer reviewed. Um, and I can see all of the different um, preset subjects. So these are controlled vocabulary subject terms. The reason that that's important to know is um, if you are doing a search, I like to use the example of the term of um, like, what would you call your grandparents? What would you call that that age of person? Um, how would you classify that group of people? So if you think in your head, what would I call um, the like a group of people that include my grandparents? I'm gonna give you a minute to think about that. Not a minute, but a second. Some people might be thinking the elderly. Some people might be thinking geriatric, um, aging, seniors. So depending on our background and our um, language that we are, you know, our first language, the language that we learned first, there can be all different kinds of reasons that we would use different words to describe the same thing. And when we have information stored in databases, we need to make sure that we're using a controlled vocabulary so that everything is grouped together that's about the same thing. Um, another more um, popular way to describe that is when you think about tagging, if you're at a, an event, you need to use the same tag that other people are using, otherwise your picture won't end up in the same um, album. <laughs> if you want your picture, if you're at a music festival or something and you want your picture to show up on the big screen, you have to use the tag that they told you to use. So this here, that's a long description here, but this is to tell you that these subjects are important to make a note of. And if you find an article that's about the, the research that you want to continue doing, it's a very good idea to write those subjects down and to say this article does, is, is pretty much covering what I want to learn more about. And so I need to know um, help seeking it's not something I would have thought of. So I need to know help seeking and perhaps student attitudes and academic achievement and barriers. And then the next time you start exploring um, more advanced search tools um, that are more advanced than this quick search, you'll be able to use those controlled vocabulary subject headings to find articles that are similar to the article that you just found. So now you are all librarians. You didn't expect that. So now I see this um, fly out over here, this pop out. And I see here uh, in this abstract, this is going to talk about what factors create barriers for students who desire to seek counseling. Um, this is a qualitative study. So they're going to collect data and they're going to talk about um, the, the way that they analyzed that data. And if that's something that I'm interested in, then I can actually click on the article. This is why I was saying it takes a little bit longer to find what you're looking for. And I can say I would like full text, click on full text. And that's going to bring me here and I can download full text. Um, let me do a little check over here in the chat. Any questions about what we've covered so far, which would be um, starting on that library's main page, going to quick search, doing a keyword search. Okay, no questions yet. So let me close this out and I will go to, back to my results list and I'm gonna switch gears and I want to show you how to find discipline specific resources in your field. So let's see who we have on the call right now. I know we have someone from electrical engineering um, I know we have a couple of people from science and technology. And I see one person on here. I don't know. Let's see. Um, Brenda, where are you coming to us from? What's your 
Uh, are you a graduate? Or you can use the chat if you want to talk to everybody, or you can just chat with me directly. Um, but what are you? Are you a graduate, undergraduate? What field are you? What um, school are you studying? Okay, I'll leave that question out there. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go back here to the library's main page. And remember, everything we did is just right there under quick search. But I also want to show you how to find our databases listed A to Z. And so if I come here down to research and instruction and I'll see databases A to Z, I can click here and these are 168 databases that we have access to. And um, just so you know, when you're using that quick search tool that we were just using, that searches the, the vast majority of our databases. It does not search all of them. And so it's good to, it's good to um, get familiar with your field, your discipline specific databases and journals. And if there's a database or a journal that you're very interested in doing a search in, you can go specifically to that journal or database and do a search. Um, or you can also use the Ask Us chat and talk to us and, and ask us. We can look into if that quick search is searching your database. Thank you, Brenda. Just reading real quick. So chemistry, okay, um, advanced, advanced research for chemistry, prebiotic chemistry experiments. Um, so here we are in A to Z databases from that main site. And rather than just looking down and scrolling through this list, just so you know, if you hover, you can kind of see what these are about, but that can be a lot of your time. So up here under subjects, I'm gonna scroll down here and say chemistry. And so there's 17 databases found for chemistry, and we've marked the best bets as the um, databases that we think that you will find the most useful. Um, if you see this R with the circle around it, that's telling you that that's restricted to the Rensselaer community, and you'll need to log in using your single sign-on. Um, sometimes you'll see that it doesn't have the R, so like Medline is an example. And these, a lot of these are um, open access or publicly accessible or government, in this case, um, government information. But that R indicates that it's an RPI subscribed source. Um, and then I also know that we have engineering here on the line. So let's see here, electrical specifically. So here's 26 databases found that should and do include information that would be interesting for intellectual electrical engineering research. Again, best bets up at the top. Um, IEEE Explore, Explore, Compendex Engineering Village, Inspec. Um, and if you're ever wanting to use some of these uh, databases and get to know how to use them a little bit better because they will be more robust than the quick search tool, you can always use the Ask Us chat on the main page or submit a ticket to have a consultation with a librarian. And what we will do, since we're not experts in all of these, is we will get back to you and find out what you want to know about this database and reach out to the people that we um, subscribe to and our vendors and we'll either set you up with talking to a vendor or we will learn how to help you get through the different database searches that you need. So we're really available for um, individual uh, research assistants if you have the need and the time to meet with us. And then lastly, I want to just show here under A to Z, um, we have also gone for science and technology studies. And you'll see here 11 databases found for science and technology studies. So that's just to show you, back to the main page, how you can use Quick Search, or you can come down here and use uh, databases A to Z. And those are two different ways to search the different databases that we have. Um, I also want to point out, if you're looking for media, so we're going to go a little off the beaten path here. Um, I think there's time for two things. So the first thing I want to do is uh, call back here to when I talked about credo reference. Um, so let's say that you're getting started on a topic, or you might even be teaching. You might even be a teaching assistant. Uh, and teaching students how to do general research. And if it's been a while since you've done general research, 
Um, you'll, you'll note that students end up using Google Scholar quite frequently. They'll go to Wikipedia a lot. And none of these are terrible things, um, but they are, they're not great for finding credible information very efficiently because you end up putting a lot of barriers and obstacles in front of you as a researcher if you have to kind of cross check and um, vet everything that you come across on the web. Um, versus if you go to something like Credo Reference, which I'll go to now. So if I'm looking for a database and I know the database by name, database is A to Z, and I know that it starts with a C because it's Credo Reference. So I can go click right here on Credo Reference and it'll open it in a new tab. You'll see that it's um, brought to you by Rensselaer. It's, a, it's a, a resource that we subscribe to. And let's say that I am looking up, um, I'm going to try this since we had some interaction here. Early Earth Chemistry. Okay, so this is why I love Credo Reference, um, especially if you're teaching undergraduates or if you just want a very quick overview of a topic. Credo Reference has done a really great job of being very visually appealing, um, visually stimulating, and also kind of, a, uh, they reach different, different learning mindsets. And so if you prefer sort of interactive visual learning, we'll see over here. Um, now, I'm gonna be perfectly honest here, especially to you, Brenda, I'm really out of my comfort zone <laughs> with, with topics. <laughs> and so this is not a topic I would have normally gone for. Um, but if I'm really curious what this is, I can click on the Miller-Urey experiment. This is not something I'm familiar with. Um, and so what is going to happen over here is this is called a mind map. And this is Credo References version of um, giving you a mind map. And so now that I've clicked on the Miller-Urey um, experiment, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, I can see that these are topics that are also related to that topic. And the closer that they are to it, the I believe, the more closely that they relate to it. And so down here, it's telling me recently, I've been looking at other topics. Um, so I can go back or I'm gonna do biogenesis and it'll just keep um, mapping over on the right. It's not actually gonna give me much information except these associated terms. If I want to know what the uh, actual terms are that I'm looking through, I would look over here on the left-hand side and I would see um, Bloomsbury Guide to Human Thought has some information on biogenesis. Um, I can also, under subjects, this is really nice to know for um, if you find yourself working with undergrads or if you yourself has a, have a specific study that you're looking for. I can say here, I'm interested in this related to science. So for instance, not related to food and drink, not related to philosophy. And if I do a drop down with science, I'm interested in this related to chemistry. And so now I've got um, Holly's Condensed Chemical Dictionary, and I can see that there's 215 words. That's gonna actually that's life origin. So, but anyway, you get the, you get the point here. And if I follow through to find that resource, Credo Reference is like a vending machine that includes. Um, encyclopedic or reference resources. So if if you're talk if you're either teaching students or you're using this information in your own research, you wouldn't say you found this necessarily in Credo Reference. You would say you found this in Holly's Condensed Chemical Dictionary because Credo is just the vendor the same way that Quick Search is just the tool that you use to find things. Um, and then you can also use some citation format assistance here. So if you're using APA, it'll give you, to their best ability, the APA citation. Um, and that's the same as true when you're in Quick Search. You can use the APA citation generator or whichever style it is that you're using. Keep in mind, these citation generators are not always uh, spot on. Um, they, they come from information that's just parsed from the computer. And so you want to make sure to so cross check them against your style guide before you go using them uh, in, an, in an assignment. And then the last thing I want to show you was one of our media resources. 
So again, A to Z databases. We have uh, all database types, and I want to find media. For streaming, streamed music, not what I'm looking for. Do, do. I thought we had media as one, so I might have to go fix that. But I will direct you to Avon, which is Academic Video Online. And scroll down. And I like to point this out. Um, so it's an Alexander Street uh, resource, and it's called, we, we call it Avon as a nickname. Um, so one way that you can use academic video online, you can use this in your own research. Uh, you can also use this in teaching. Um, but if you are using it in your own research, one thing that I like to point out is, let's pick something. And I'm just going to go with anything at this point, because I want to show you something that they I do play and hold on, I'm going to pause. Uh, this is what I love about academic video online. You can search the transcript. So I, I found a video that I'm looking for. I go to click play. I click on transcript. I can pause the video and you can either skim the transcript if you just want to get a sense of what they're talking about, but you can also search the transcript. And so if somebody told you you should really come to this uh, Little Wonders of Nanoengineering and they talk about the heart, I can do a search and it'll highlight everywhere where they talk about the heart. So heart surgeons, heart surgery, and I could click to that section and it will bring me to that section in the um, video. And so this can be a really good way to do uh, scholarly research, like research on your topics, but using media to see what people might be talking about in different films. But you can also use it to uh, show a transcript if you're teaching and you can use the create a clip button and create a clip and embed it in an LMS or cite. You can use the um, citation and you can pick your uh, style and include that in your academic papers. So they have APA 7. And you can also download in RAS format if you're using Mendeley, which is the citation manager that we recommend using here. Um, so again, main page. We've done three things, and I'm going to open it up for questions after this. We've used Quick Search. Um, I've showed you journal, uh, databases A to Z. And I have shown you Avon, which is in databases A to Z, and also how to locate your different subject specific databases. And the last thing is just to show you that the catalog is a different interface. And if you'll notice, it's completely different from Quick Search right off the bat. The catalog uh, includes everything that the library owns, so not things that we subscribe to. Um, it, if, you, if you've been around long enough to have ever used a card catalog, um, or seen a card catalog, you'll know that it's uh, it indicates everything physically housed in the library, but now it also indicates digital media or ebooks and things that we have purchased. So if I do a search for technology, uh, I'd like to say technology management. This will not be searching articles. This will not be searching peer reviewed scholarly articles. Uh, this will be searching ebooks, print books, RPI theses and dissertations, microforms, and manuscripts. But if you're looking for peer reviewed scholarly articles and you go to the catalog, you will be disappointed. So, Quick Search is the better place to go for articles, and Quick Search also searches the catalog. So, Quick Search is really your one stop shop. But if you know you're just looking for a book, that the library owns, then the catalog is the place to go. So I'll say technology management. I need it to be something that is in Folsom Library, and I would like for it to be a print book in the last five years. And so here are the 90 results on that topic that you could find in Folsom Library. 
and you can see that it's currently available. And so if you would like, when you find a book that's available or unavailable for that matter, and it's checked out, you can place a hold and you can pick it up at either the um, Folsom or the architecture, depending on where you prefer to pick items up. So that's my spiel and I've covered quite a bit of information. So I want to open up for questions. I have a good comment in there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I'll do a little pitch here to show you where you can um, talk to us down the road when you have questions as you start to use these tools. Um, the first thing is here, chat with a librarian. Once you see the unicorn, you know you're in the right place. That'll pop up a chat window. Um, and you may be chatting with a librarian from another institution, depending on the time of day, but those questions will always get back to us. You can also request a consultation, a one on one consultation. So under research and instruction. Um, this has a couple of different ways that you can get reference services. So you may notice that RPI does not have a traditional reference desk when you walk into the library. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't find us when you need us. Uh, we're here all the time. So you can use Ask Us Chat if you need a question answered right away. You can schedule a virtual consultation. Um, you can use a Contact Us form. That'll come straight to us. And you can also check out the FAQ page for common reference questions. Um, and when we get questions from researchers and we notice that we get the questions pretty frequently, then we add them to the FAQ page. You can also view your departmental liaisons if you want to reach out to a librarian who can help you with specific topics or databases. So I am going to stop sharing or stop recording, I should say.